I went to you a number of years ago and spoke at the uh, National Observatory there. And all these Japanese astronomers are coming into my talk. Now, this is a nation that's 1.5% Christian. And yet, when I talked to the astronomers after my, my message, half of them said that they were Christians already, and half of the other half said they were studying the Bible to become Christians. So I said, what was it that brought you to this position in a nation that's 98.5% non-Christian? And every one of them talked about the evidence for the Big Bang creation event, how general relativity speaks as the beginning of space and time, and then the anthropic principle, how we look at the universe, we see it has these exquisitely fine-tuned characteristics of design. So I don't think it's right to say that naturalism is driving them to these conclusions. There's just way too many evangelical astronomers in the different nations of the world for us to draw that conclusion. Well, keep in mind, though, the origins of the Big Bang. I mean, these, this was not a theory developed by Christians for Christians, was it? I mean, most of these scientists that developed the Big Bang were secular astronomers competing with another secular model. It's true that, that the Big Bang, at least some versions of the Big Bang, teach a beginning to the universe, and it's true that the Bible teaches a beginning to the universe, but one point of agreement doesn't mean that they're the same thing, does it? There's there several are many points, points of agreement. Of the Bible also talks about a continuously expanding universe. That's part of the Big Bang model. The Big Bang model talks about how the universe has constant physics. This too is in the Bible, that we live in a universe where God has fixed the laws that govern the universe. And it's a universe that gets colder and colder, it gets older and older. And you're a physicist, you know that if you've got constant physics and the universe is continuously expanding, that's a universe that gets colder and colder as it gets older and older. And we have direct measurements to show us that the universe at great distances is much hotter than the universe we see up close. We can actually measure the universe getting colder and colder as it goes from the creation event to the present day. And it gets colder and colder with the, exactly the values we would predict from a Big Bang creation model. I think it's important to understand that because we all have the same evidence, the same evidence is going to come up w whatever model that you have but there's going to be different interpretations of that based upon your starting point. And I still, I still maintain and, uh, that philosophical naturalism is at the basis of these issues. Big Bang, Old Earth, I mean, Old Earth didn't even, wasn't even popularized until the 1700s, 1800s, which, which unwittingly or not, or whether, you, whether we recognize it or not, has caused many people to, to even doubt the scriptures, reinterpret the scriptures. And, and, and even, you know, Dr. Kaiser, you said, you know, in regard to the age of the earth or things like that, at the beginning you said, I'm not, I'm not a theologian, leave it to the scientists. The very fact that we make such a statement, it, it means we've been influenced to think that only scientists can talk about history in the beginning when we have a witness who was there who knows everything. This should be our study. Is that what you're saying, Dr. Kaiser? No. Uh, I really think there is general revelation. I think God holds us accountable to it. I think that... The general revelation is also fallen, isn't it? It's what? Fallen. It's suffering from sin and the curse. Uh, no more than the uh, biblical interpreter. The biblical interpreter is fallen but, too. But the, but, but the, but the, uh, the but theologian the that The words of scripture it. are not fallen, are they? Uh, the words of scripture are always true because God gave them. Okay. And that's why you really have to count, I'm sure as you do, that there is the fallen scientist, there is the mm -hmm. fallen theologian. Mm -hmm. And the fallen theologian can begin with the theory also and a presupposition. You've got to examine the assumptions of the theologian. Why does that theologian want to start that way? And what were the motivations that really but, began that? And, and, and my assumption is that I'm, I'm going to take scripture in a grammatical, historical way. In other words, I'm, I'm taking what it says, that it's the word of God, that's what it claims. And I know there's different sorts of literature. There's history, poetry. I'm going to let it speak to me in the best of my ability the best of my ability, let those words in their plain, ordinary sense, the, 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 the obvious meaning, the plain sense, let them speak to me, knowing that I am a fallible interpreter, but I'm much more likely to, to get the truth there than I am to try and interpret a nonverbal, a nonverbal... Right. Uh, 30 seconds, that'll just wrap it up. You and I begin on that same way, so there must be something else, and indeed there That's is. That's right, there has to be something else and, driving it. And it is that... Uh, you begin also with an assumption the word day must mean what I say that it does. In spite of my uh, gentle way, I hope, of trying to help you understand, there were three of these, which call it, before God made the one that is in your common understanding. I've said that repeatedly, and apparently 
uh, you're well, saying that's not good enough for me. Yeah. I see what you're saying, and I don't know how to refute it. Uh, and it does sound biblical, but it doesn't go according to my basic 